Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. The adoption of the Rome Statute was a hopeful historic moment near the end of a century marked by atrocities and unspeakable inhumanity. Yet, serious violations of international law continue and vast accountability gaps persist. Our abiding challenge is to realize the full potential of the International Criminal Court. We must stay the course on this forward march of humanity. The commitment of states' parties in particular to support the work of the court will be key to determining the precise trajectory of this path. A été un tournant décisif pour la question du crime d'agression, pour avoir vu cinq États, à savoir le Chili, El Salvador, l'Islande, les Pays-Bas et l'État de Palestine ratifier les amendements du crime d'agression. My name is Klaus Kress and I teach criminal law and public international law in the University of Cologne. In the very early hours of today, the Assembly of States parties took the decision to activate the International Criminal Court's jurisdiction over the crime of aggression. The international debate that preceded this decision um, has taken almost 100 years. In his late 90s, Ben Ferenc has a broader view than most on war, peace, diplomacy and the international legal order. In 1947, Ferenc became chief prosecutor for the United States in the Einsatzgruppen case, one of the 12 American-led Nuremberg trials held in historic courtroom 600 for Nazi leaders suspected to have committed grave crimes, including the crime against peace. There's no reason to glorify war. War is hell. We have to move away from the glorification that war is great and to another one that peace is great. And the UN Charter requires that. They list 10 other ways of settling disputes. Judicial settlement is one of them. Even if you lose a case, it's going to be better than war. Law, not war because I think law under all circumstances is better than war. It has been a decade and a half since the International Criminal Court opened its doors in The Hague. Established by an international treaty called the Rome Statute, the ICC is the only permanent international court capable of trying individuals for genocide, crimes against humanity, and the war, war crimes. crimes charged against him. Klaus Kress was a member of the German delegation to Rome. Well, the significance uh, is that the Rome Statute, as agreed in 1998, was incomplete. One very important crime, the crime of aggression, was missing. It was left undefined. And why was that so important? Uh, the whole story of modern international criminal law started with the crime of waging wars of aggression. That was very much what uh, the Nuremberg and the Tokyo trials was about. Before an international tribunal holding court in the former war ministry in Tokyo, come the wartime leaders of Japan to be indicted as criminals. Originally, during the Nuremberg trials after the Second World War, the crime of aggression was called the crime against peace and dubbed the supreme international crime because it contained within it all the other crimes. The crime of aggression is about the participation of an individual in a major illegal use of force by a state. It is about state leadership. The crime of aggression does not cover the participation of the individual low-ranking soldier in military, illegal military campaigns. The crime is focused towards those who actually mastermind the overall action, and that's the state leadership, the political establishment, state presidents, prime minister. It is those who are concerned by this crime.
Professor Roger Clark from the Rutgers School of Law was also in Rome in 1998 and has devoted his professional life to international criminal law. I like to think that we're still working on a negotiation that uh, began in Versailles in 1919 and <laughs> drafting the uh, Covenant of the League of Nations and followed through the Kellogg-Briand Pact, the Nuremberg Trials, the Tokyo Trials, the efforts in the International Law Commission over the years our failure in Rome to get agreement on uh, a definition of the crime but an understanding that it should nonetheless be within the jurisdiction of the court a and then of course the subsequent efforts to uh, bring it to fruition uh, at uh, Kampala. In 2010, the first review conference of the Rome Statute of the ICC took place in Kampala, Uganda. The main goal of the conference was to finally agree on a definition of the crime of aggression and the conditions under which the court could exercise its jurisdiction. Ambassador Christian Wienerwieser from Liechtenstein, then president of the Assembly of States Parties, was leading the negotiations in Kampala. In 2010 in Kampala we managed to find a consensus on, uh, on the crime of aggression, on provisions both on definition and on uh, exercise of jurisdiction. I think it was a success that many thought was not possible, in particular because it was a consensual agreement. Thank you very much for listening to me at 1.20 a.m. <laughs> East African Standard Time. Thank you, sir. And with these short final words, I declare closed the review conference of the International Criminal Court. It was decided that the amendments had to be ratified by at least 30 member states and that the Assembly of States parties of the ICC had to take another decision after January 2017 to activate the court's jurisdiction over the crime of aggression. I think the Kampala consensus is, of course, a product of compromise, but I think it is a good compromise. Um, I think for those who advocate a very strong regime, the, uh, the compromise they had to make was to say that for the time being it does not apply to non-states parties. That was a big compromise, but I think that was inevitable. For the others uh, who were rather skeptical, the big compromise was to say we give up on the exclusive role of the Security Council in this uh, respect. Beyond this compromise, other controversies have persisted. Even though legitimate instances of self-defense or military action authorized by the Security Council are of course not covered by the definition, other situations are less clear. For example, just in the last 20 years, conflicts in Kosovo, Iraq and the Ukraine have generated heated arguments on what would constitute preemptive wars, humanitarian interventions, and wars of aggression. There can be no doubt that proceedings for a crime of aggression are politically sensitive and will attract political criticism. But in my view, the most important thing is to complete the Rome Statute, because we said in 98 the crime of aggression is one of the most serious crimes and to have an internationally binding definition of what that crime is, because we've never had that before. So that is, in my view, the historic step. Stefan Beriga was the principal legal advisor to the chief negotiators on the crime of aggression for Liechtenstein and is currently the deputy head of the Liechtenstein mission to the European Union in Brussels. It took a number of states some time to then rethink the outcome of Kampala and to realize that despite the fact that each delegation did not get everything they wanted, it is still a historic compromise and that the overall goal, the core really of this project, namely to effectively criminalize the most serious forms of the illegal use of force, that that goal is actually within sight. With 34 states parties to the ICC, Africa forms the largest regional constituency. It has outlawed the illegal use of force by one state against another in several African Union agreements. Atalia Molokome, 
Botswana's ambassador to Switzerland and the UN, and former Attorney General, played an important role in Botswana's ratification of the Kampala Amendments. As countries that find themselves in many respects at the bottom of the power game, as it were, I think certainly my country, as Botswana, I believe that it is important that the crime of aggression becomes legislated as part of the international criminal justice infrastructure. And I think it is for us smaller countries, the incorporation of the crime of aggression would be of great benefit because basically we want to make sure that, you know, uh, power and might are not right. Don Ferenc, Ben Ferenc's son, is the founder of the Global Institute for the Prevention of Aggression. So my father, as you know, opened his case in Nuremberg saying the case we present is a plea of humanity to law. That plea was answered in Nuremberg, but now in the Rome Statute and in the amendments, we have a plea of law to humanity. That plea was answered in New York in December 2017 at the Assembly of States Parties of the International Criminal Court. I wish to commend the Assembly after a very serious, frank and insightful discussions for having been able to agree on new amendments to the Rome Statute, but especially for having agreed to activate the jurisdiction of the court over the crime of aggression, a true landmark in the advancement of international criminal justice and a clear signal to the world that we are moving forward and not backwards. Thank you very much. Good morning. The meeting is adjourned. For the first time since Ben Ferenc was a young prosecutor in courtroom 600 in Nuremberg, statesmen can be prosecuted for the crime of aggression. Still, the diplomatic compromises made to activate the court's jurisdiction were significant. In order for the court to exercise jurisdiction, also the alleged aggressor state must have ratified or accepted the amendments. By the end of 2017, 35 out of 123 International Criminal Court member states have done so, falling short of the aspirations of full equality in the enforcement of international criminal law against aggression. But as the ICC awaits more members and ratifications, the activation of the court's jurisdiction over the crime of aggression is another milestone in international criminal law. It is to be hoped that over time more and more states will ratify the Kampala Amendments. For those states who set in judgment in Nuremberg, it would only mean to fully embrace their own legacy, the legacy of the creative president of Nuremberg. Mm -hmm.